What's up everyone, it's Rory here from Enlighten the Shadows. Today is going to be episode 13. Um, we've had so many episodes just packing in right now in the diary. And what that means is we are going places because we strongly believe in the cause of supporting men with their mental health and their mindfulness. Uh, the reason why I got stuck on the episode is because we're in double figures and it's just crazy how fast this is going for me. And I want to say to all other people who are on this journey, thank you so much. Stay with us. We are going places. It's exciting times. Even today, I've met with Rebel Gym in Nottingham. It's a boxing weightlifting gym. And they have had a very productive meeting with us today where they're pretty much giving us the go ahead to have an environment where we can get in there and have open chat um, sessions with other fellas and bring people in so we can just get real and talk real. So yeah, um, thank you so much. And before we transition into our special guest for today, I wanna say to you, it's so important to us that we create a bigger following, not so that we get famous, but so the message gets out. So can you just on the screen right now, it's coming up, it's that red button. I know I see it every time, but it means the world. Click that subscribe button, get a YouTube account set up, and join us on the journey. And also coming up on the screen also right now is Twitter and Instagram, follow us. And we're soon we're gonna be hitting up Facebook. But without further ado, thank you for joining us tonight. But we have a, a very, very specialized person with us. And you won't mind me saying, but James Carter tonight works with NHS and he specializes in mental health. And his role is like dealing with mental health programs. And without going into it, before I introduce that, I just want to say, James, thank you so much, mate, for coming on tonight. Hi, Rory, mate. Good to see you. Nice to see you. A great intro, and it sounds like you've been busy, so that's good. Oh, it's brilliant. It's good busy. And you know what, mate? I, um, I've got a full-time job, and as I alluded to that meeting earlier tonight at the gym, he said, oh, so, you know, what is this? With, you know, And I was like, no, it's all voluntary. So, you know, it's not a burden. It's not um, tiring for me. I get energy out of this because I really mm. believe in um, doing my bit to support any blokes possible. So yeah, um, come on, I want to ask you this. So well, before we go well, into um, what you do, and we can break that down for our viewers and um, just go places tonight to really mm. create a community. And I guess there's this organic nature about how we've met and I, how I sense our relationship may go in the future to support men and create um, environments and groups to to expand the mission for mental health for men. Um, just tell our viewers about how we came across each other. Yeah, so so it's interesting. So well, I think we've so I, I, outside of my day job, I've got um, a Twitter handle Forged in Life, uh, which I'm very keen to pursue. Um, uh, specifically men and mental health, uh, but thinking about resilience, thinking about opportunities to for growth and and trying to sort of really build up emotional well-being in men. And um, yeah, I can't recall exactly, should have done this, bit of, re bit of research, but I remember we came, we came across each other and we were like bouncing ideas off each other and it was, it felt, I could just literally feel your energy coming through the screen and, and like, just like now really. And, yeah. and we, we came together and we started having a conversation and we, we bounced a few ideas around and then we got on the phone, didn't we? And we had a brilliant hour and a half. I mean, it should have been an hour. We, we just carried on nattering onto each other. And that's when you offered to say, would you go up and think about coming on the podcast? So I was like, of course, mate. You know, like any opportunity. You know, similar to you, uh, I've got a day job. It is in mental health, fortunately. But I know what's important. And I know that actually mental health can only go, or mental health support can only go sort of uh, to a certain point. And then what happens then is we need more people in reaching into communities in reaching into you know into our societies so just hearing things about the boxing gym hearing things about how you want to get conversations going that's exactly what we want to be doing and, and i have a similar sort of ethos to yourself mate yeah that's brilliant man we it was twitter i think we connected on twitter of all places you say and um that's what makes me like just smile and be buzzing about the fact that we've connected is through the internet because social media gets so much like slack and sometimes I give it a little bit of a few jabs but mm. and, and, and Twitter particularly can be just like proper volatile you can have quality banter on there but then you just get like people obsessed with one another just absolutely trolling and um, 
it, all, oh, it can get really nasty. But what mm. I like to say tonight on this show is Twitter smashed it out of the park because it's brought me and you together um, who've got a similar passion and heart to make this world a better place. And, yeah. Um, yeah, so thank you for well, look, just like dialoguing with me, mate. It's class. Not at all, man. Not at all. And and you know, this is it. You know, this is the 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 what I'm what I'm really getting energized by is the opportunity to talk to people from different parts of the country, uh, you know, different sectors of society, uh, you know, different cultures, different languages, you know, different sort of uh, experiences. And I think what's really interesting as a result of that is the sort of the 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 approach to mental health. Uh, especially for men is it, it feels like it like it sort of deserves its own sort of concentration because it is so sort of multiple in it you know it's like it's just it's universal and this is the thing that gets me about mental health really you know there's what other thing can be universal you know had by all but also be as individual as you know someone's sort of mental state at any time or any place in their life so you know and then you sort of overlay the men, you know, men's experiences, you know, men's experiences in, in modern society, all that sort of stuff. And you sort of think, you know what, we've got to do more and we've got to start talking in the language of men rather than just sort of saying, well, here's some services here, here's some that. And we can talk about that down the line. But, you know, for me, it's about getting the, the message right and getting the voice right. And that for me is when I hear you speak like that, it means so much and it gets me it really gets me energized and excited. Absolutely. And now I was saying this to um, Kev at Rebel Jim Nottingham. Um, the thing is with mental health is that it's not one size fits all. Like mm. it's completely a person centered approach. Like everyone's completely unique. Everyone has different sufferings. Everyone has different circumstances and everyone interprets them differently. And that's why I, I was trying to say to him, look in like the shadows is not the way. We are just one way of it's a few a way. ways, mm. yeah, of many ways. Sorry, that can reach this world and be something for some people. Um, and he was like, "Yeah, yeah." And I'm just saying because, like, we said about 15 years ago, blokes could cope. It well, it appeared that they could cope better. Um, they made out they could cope better. But she's like, "Yeah, something's going on." And I tell you something as well, James. I found out in the last 24 hours through um, my football team I play for that one of the lads locally has, uh, has hung himself and has passed as a result. And it's just like, this is the point. Like, something's happening. We don't have to know all the answers, but we know it's happening. It's there. And we need yep. to talk about it. <laughs> Yeah. I can't. I can't agree. I, I can't agree more. And I'm sorry to hear that. I mean, it's it is a, a sad statistic, as we as we know. And I know you've talked about it on on previous uh, previous ch shows before. Um, but when it hits home and it's sort of you know local or local to you or you know part of your life, um, that can just set set off a whole sort of sort of seismic shift around that that sort of very sad situation and. Um, you don't realize just how much uh, you know a suicide can impact a society or uh, you know a, a, a sector of society as a result of that so sorry about that pal yeah it's all right i i didn't know the lad personally but a lot of my teammates knew him or knew of him um and if i i might be right in saying that even the lady at rebels who's like ilkston way um mm. have heard of of a suicide of a male this week so I don't know if it's the same one or it's, it's mm. more than one, but it just re-emphasised the fact that we've got to create a space for bloke where they can get that space in their head outwardly, where they don't see like killing themselves as the only option available. Yeah, so, yeah definitely. Yeah. Um, just for our viewers, James, mate, are you right to just share mm. a little bit like your current role, like you know, what you specialise yeah. in, what you do exactly, and, and what you kind of see? Yeah, sure. So... Um, so I work for uh, NHS England, which is the um, broadly, it's the sort of the overarching organisation for NHS services in, in England. And I work in mental health. So, pardon me, that's not great, is it? Um, Mate, <laughs> but broadly, keep it, it's, real, it's real talk, real memory. Real, real yeah. times, yeah. We don't, um, no plastic environment. <laughs> I said that last time we've had um, dogs, we've had um, 
partners walk in the background. Yeah, La- yeah. Last episode, I had the, the phone popping off. I made sure I unplugged that tonight. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> idea. I like that. Well, I shouldn't have had my dinner so late because I went out for a run, so I feel a bit like behind time. But um, yeah, so so as, as the NHS in England, what we're responsible for is uh, broadly, we're responsible for funding mental health services. So what you might sort of envisage as being almost sort of like secondary care for mental health. So, you know, um, people with a serious mental illness, people that have, that, that you know, are um, are supported actually in, in a secure setting and that sort of thing. So some very sort of serious sort of conditions and, and serious mental illness. Oh, yeah. um, but we also have the responsibility that government give us, which is about sort of the transformation agenda and try and sort of enact what government wants us to do. So it's very much a strategic role. Right. I'm one of the bad guys. I'm not a clinician. So, you know, I'm a manager, one of these bad people. But, you know, <laughs> basically my role really is to try and bring the national policy and what that looks like on the ground, specifically in the southeast, even though I'm from Blackpool and spent a lot of time in the Midlands as well as a teenager and a young adult, um, you know, basically to bring uh, yeah, the national policy and, and what that looks like on the ground. So my role really is to try and connect a lot of people together, lots of stakeholder management, project program management right. stuff, that sort of thing, relationship management, basically. Brilliant. But the sort, but the sort of things I guess that we're seeing, you know, when you think about serious mental illness, you can think about things like eating disorders, uh, psychosis, you know, manic depression or depression, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, bipolar, personality disorder. Those sorts of serious mental illnesses are normally treated via, the, via NHS services. Right. But, then, but then you've also got like more common mental illnesses. Doesn't mean they're any less severe or any less sort of, you know, like dangerous, uh, you know, potentially, sorry. Um, so things like depression, anxiety, mm-hmm. uh, OCD, uh, stress, uh, you know, panic attacks, you know, that sort of thing. They're more your sort of common mental illness that are associated with anxiety or depression. And the NHS does play a role in supporting that through things like talking therapies, which you may have heard of. I know you've had a few clinicians on before, but talking therapies is broadly cognitive behavioural therapy. Right, yeah. um, don't want to get too complicated on that but you know more often than not it is a sort of a first step therapy mainly a talking therapy to enable people to understand where they're at to understand how they might be able to approach things or plan or whatever it might be so it's a really good sort of coping therapy it's a good opportunity to talk uh, and to use sort of your experience really to base um uh yeah to base your sort of not recovery but almost try to acknowledge or understand where you are with things so we do both we've got the the sort of serious mental illness and the common mental illness but I think what's really interesting for me and this is why you and I have connected is that there's almost like a seam underneath what I call like emotional well-being Mm. and often that's linked to social situations you know um, elements such as you know previous trauma at a young age you know loneliness and social isolation grief you know, uh, poverty, debt, you know, uh, self-criticism, self-doubt, you know, all those sorts of things that, you know, really are sort of, uh, they're a sort of a very thin sort of strata of, of um, uh, sort of, I don't know how you put, well, you, you put it down as like life experience yeah. and you can either have sort of okay life experience or you can have life crap you know you can have the death of a loved one you can have like you know an an addiction or a dependence or something like that that all of a sudden tips the balance and then you start going into very challenging sort of areas and that's when mental health or mental ill health can start to sort of develop um and so what the nhs doesn't work on is that emotional well-being line which is i think where you hold a very thin line and i try and hold a very thin line to 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 make sure that our uh, I keep saying society is not, it's not right, is it? You know, uh, the, the groups and the people that we engage with mm-hmm. are, you know, are supported as much as possible. Sorry, that was a bit of a ramble. It's not a ramble. You just, you're going quite um, detailed about what you do. It's important when I bring on my guests, that I, <clears throat> what they're about and what their background and experience can bring to this conversation table. So it's very important that, you know, in the first few minutes, mate, that you, you actually give them, a full sale of yourself so um mm. we can go somewhere and, and what I, what I stood out for me in what you said was about that thin strata so it's like 
you, we talk, we know, you know, you and I know there's people sectioned on the mental health act, like people mm. who most people in society don't even know sometimes exist where, where um, they've got such ill mental health. It's just manifested to such a strong level that it's not even safe for them or, or for others yeah. for them to be in the community. But yeah. what I want to focus on in, in what you mentioned is, is this um, ability to regulate your feelings and emotions, ability to interpret your suffering and, those those great lists that you made like debt poverty abuse traumas um because there's many people who are watching these pro these episodes sorry um that would have had these but dismissed them but yet they don't quite feel right and then there's like this gap isn't there like you've got the people who are sectioned and i just want to ask you this do you know the people who were sectioned and, uh, and stuff like that and their, their mental health sadly deteriorates would you say if we were better as a society, as communities, as families, as suburbs, as streets, mm. towns, cities, regions, if we were better at identifying and talking and listening and, and creating communities where mental health and social emotional skills are promoted, would you say yeah. that there would be less admissions, there would be less people that would be sectioned that the, the, even even doctors, GP services wouldn't be so inundated. What's your I thoughts think, on that? Yeah, I mean, like I say, I can't go down a, a clinical route, but I would definitely um, agree with that. I think, you know, the old adage that it takes a village to bring up a person, you know, and, yeah. uh, and, and actually sort of dr driving a community and bringing a community together around a person is really important. Um, and I think the NHS recognises that. I think local authorities recognise that. Um, I think the third sector and the voluntary sector are sort of they're, they're almost the right group people to be doing that sort of support. I think there's a bit of a caveat there, and I think that's where it sort of comes to people like yourself. Oh, yeah. um, but I think to go back to the original point, I think what we're now discovering, certainly a lot more sort of focus is on how we, we change our approach to acknowledging trauma and acknowledging previous experience right. as uh, as an identifier or a precursor to someone developing a mental a, men a serious mental illness so you know there's these things called adverse childhood experiences the sort of ACEs, oh, ACEs. yeah yeah aces yeah. which you know the, the the evidence says that if you have uh, you know up to five or if you have around five adverse childhood experiences you know whether that's the loss of a parent or a, an alcohol dependent parent or some sort of abuse or some sort of violence or threat of violence uh, you know if you bunch all that together the likelihood is that you will um, develop a serious mental illness in the future um, and the evidence is clear yeah so absolutely so what we're trying to, so what now is trying to develop is this thing called trauma informed practice. Police are doing it a lot. Um, I think there's quite a, a big move to move trauma informed practice in the prison estate. And um, I think also towns and cities are starting to develop a trauma informed approach to their thinking, which allows practitioners, staff, you know, people themselves, you know, service users, whatever, to actually acknowledge that there is a, a big part to play in what was previous experience and, and how traumatic events have actually shaped people's modification of their behaviours, basically, to, to stay safe. That's yeah, yeah. it. You know, that, that's where this sort of, you know, adjusted behaviour comes from, uh, is from those, uh, those adverse childhood experience or the trauma. Yeah, which sadly, a lot of us, like, blokes, have batted off we paid it and thought yeah. uh it wasn't that bad and uh, i sucked it up really and just got on with it and yeah. that's usually like the pro i'm not saying that is all men or always everywhere but that's yeah. that's the vibe i get from typical british blokes and um you know and, and uh construction workers particularly I, I i believe the statistic is around 11 blokes a week who are construction site workers uh sadly mm -hmm. commit suicide and, it, yep. and it's not to put people in boxes and stereotype, but it's like your classic environment of, oh, yeah, it'll be all right. Oh, come on, crack on. Oh, laugh it off, mate. Get on. Oh, it'll be all right. Yeah, that, yeah, this yeah. whole mentality of, of just denial, um, I think, is very damaging. And 
this is where we need to really like integrate, as I said earlier, like these communities and, and say, nah, if you're struggling and, and you feel like you maybe can't trust someone or talk to someone at work yeah. on the site because you'll, you'll be batted off as a soft or you know, whatever, you know, so people like in Light in the Shadows will be like, yo, we are here and we're, we're saying, let's chat. No yeah, pressure. absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I think, uh, we, we need more of that. We need more inform, informed sort of staff. You know, we need more people that are uh, attuned to that sort of way of thinking. It's really hard to get people to open up, right? It's really hard to get blokes to open Absolutely. up. If we could have, if we could have that as a bit of a magic pill, I guess you know we'd we'd have a, a a big opportunity to to change all that. I think, like you've said, you know, it's about setting up the environment and the communities. Yeah. Uh, I also think we need more informed people to recognize you know if someone is a uh, showing very erratic behaviors you know you don't just call them oh you know there's a, you know there's a psycho down the road or whatever you know it's it, it's we've got to be a lot more sort of aware of of that even and, and I that, think, sorry <laughs> no no carry on my bad i thought it was a bit of a lag um even fellas this stands out for me who are quote seem to go off the rails a little bit or or he's lost his head a little um i won't go into details but in my lifetime there's been multiple occasions of this where that conversation that lad chat has happened that i have heard um not engaged with but i've heard and you're like that's this is not helpful but i but i guess I, and i'll be vulnerable i bottled it a little bit i should have spoke out and said mm. no no but i was just I was listening to the language. I was listening to what was happening. I was taking it all in because I was just a bit like, this is the problem. It's like we see someone who isn't quite right and as blokes, we t I don't like to say this, but we take the piss out of it. That's what, mm. that's what happens. It, it seems as like, oh, yes, yeah, it's like something to talk about, but almost like, oh, it's not me. Oh, he's gone off the rails. He's lost his head a bit. Oh, he's... He's got MIA or this lot, and you're like, yeah. And what have we done about it? What this? are we doing about it? Yeah, yeah. It there is, isn't like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's tough, isn't it? I mean, um, you know, I go to football. Uh, you know, you see people that you know are obviously in distress after a few beers or whatever, and you know, you want to try and reach out to someone, and it's not really the right sort of place to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, or you know, me as a bit more of a as not, not suggesting that this is right or wrong, but you know, me as a bit more of an open bloke will sort of, you know, have chats with my mates. They'll be like, "Oh, shut up, yeah, what are you about?" You know, da da da. You know, and I'll just and I'll laugh it off as well. But you know, in in a way, you know, the the, the longer you stay in that space, uh, the more trusted you can, you will become. Mm. And uh, you know, I suppose we, as informed people, and hopefully people that, that watch the web, the the the, the podcast can say, you know, I'm here. And I'll stick around, you know what I mean? And I, yeah. and I get what you're saying, you know, people will always give a bit of peer pressure and they'll always be like, oh, don't be soft, just leave them to it, you know, type of thing. But, you know, just maybe lag behind a little bit, uh, maybe ask twice, you know, there's a lot of stuff going around. I think there's some good stuff from the charities, you know, on men's mental health, um, World Suicide Prevention Day on the 10th of, of, uh, of September, isn't it? So, you know, the... the there will be those things about sort of asking twice. So my advice in that scenario uh, is to lag back a bit. Uh, mm. Don't get pushed off by the first no and try and be as, uh, you know, as open and as transparent as possible and just allow the conversation to flow. Sorry, my computer keeps blooming closing on me. That's all right. You look, Sorry, you're still mate. looking fine, mate. It's all going well. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope I'm not blocking up. It looks like I'm blocking up all the time. No, nah, no, nah, you're good. Oh, okay, good. good. It's, we, we roll with it. Um, <laughs> do you know what you said to me? Really, really um, peculiar. Not in a, I'm not criticising it. You said it's not the right time or place. And also, that's something that I want to just elaborate in what, we, what we're saying, because I've had that personally where you want to some some stuff and some pain you have kept in your head for decades and this is what happened to me. i've kicked it in for decades and i mm. want to 
talk and I'm not going to say who or when or where I want to talk about it. And it was, and it was genuinely dismissed because mm. it wasn't. And I'm just, before I misquote, I believe they said, Oh, not now. It's the wrong time. Mm. Not now. It's the wrong time. And I was mm. like, in my head, I, was, I didn't say it. I stayed calm, but I was fuming. I thought I, I have been quiet. I've, I've, regress these memories i've kept in this pain and anger and rage within my head some of it knowingly some unknowingly mm-hmm. and just this around that 12 months i was becoming more self-aware a little bit like the stuff we we're saying about 10 minutes 15 minutes ago where we're like um that surface layer stuff of suffering and and having that social emotional awareness of where i'm mm-hmm. at in my head and i'm talking um, to trusted people and this person very close just said not now it's wrong not uh, now and i'm just like imagine uh, uh, this sounds really um a bit deep and full-on james but and i and i'll say it on camera and I've, i don't believe i've said this more than once but i i have been multiple suicidal thoughts um around that time mm. um, i wasn't going to do it but i felt it strongly um, but if I didn't have the resilience and, um, the, cause I am a Christian and the faith that I've got in God, a hundred, a hundred percent, I would have killed myself. Mm. And, I, and I don't say that flippantly. And that's a really, um, strong thing to say on, on yeah, live, yeah, but I, I mean it sincerely. And I'm just, I'm just thinking like, oh my gosh, if that was someone else, um, wrong place, wrong time, you're like, oh and shoot. So yeah, talking- do you know what I mean? Like. You're right. Like there's times, there's so, so certain social settings where it's like, oh no, mate, not now. Like, oh, it's, you know, we're just, it's, we're having a chill day, or we're meant to be having a fun yeah, yeah. day. And do you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, I do, I do. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that. I mean, that's. Uh, thanks for sharing that because I, I guess, that, mate. you know, the the sense that, um, the sense that we can. Uh, almost shut down those feelings and and like you say you know almost sort of pass it over because it feels like a social a bit of social awkwardness when someone is literally you know put themselves out there um mm. we've got to be aware to that we have to be aware to that and uh you know i think i have seen you know sort of cries for help from friends and you know fortunately you know i mean there are certainly you know lots of examples and, and uh, won't go into them now but you know there are times where you sort of you know you do feel almost that sort of pang of a doubt and i guess that's you know what that is that's just in your instincts right so you know you, you've got to be in a position you know you experience that someone sort of gave you the wrong reaction you won't you know you're that's not going to sit with you ever you know that's not going to sit well with you ever again you'll make sure that you're doing that and if we can help educate people just to trust their instincts, if they feel something's not right, invariably it will be that something isn't right, you know? Definitely, mate. Definitely. Um, do you know, like, with your job, and we're talking mental health tonight, and I've been loving this chat, particularly I just feel like this theme of being socially aware um, mm. of others and yourself. Um, what, what drove you, mate, to really get involved with um, your role at, 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 within NHS with mental health. Yeah, well, it's uh, you know, I'm a big fan of people's testimonies, especially in mental health, and um, I think it takes guts, I think it takes balls, and I think it takes um, uh, a level of sort of um, awareness or inner awareness, self awareness, or what have you. Mm-hmm. I, I sort of thought about my journey in in, in mental health. And, Certainly, the reason that I moved into mental health um, has been an organic one. It's been a professional. It's been a professional one. I feel as though I'm very much in my place now, and that's brilliant. Um, where whichever way it takes me, but you know that's where I, I want to be. Um, but there were times when uh, you know. So I'm 44 now. I worked um, the first 10 years of my career. I was working in account management, business development in this in, in London. Uh, you know, sales and account management, that sort of stuff. You're and I thought well, I was doing. You're looking well. Good at 44. Oh, cheers, kid. Career. Hey. Cheers, kid. Well, this is this is why <laughs> uh, this is 
<laughs> the story's in here somewhere. But uh, yeah, so I, I, I basically, I, I felt I was doing well. You know, I was doing, yeah. I thought I was doing good, um, which is, was one of the main things that I, I, I wanted to do. Because I wanted to, my initial thoughts were to go and work in the civil service. My mum works in the NHS. Well, my mum worked in the NHS. My auntie, my sister did. My dad was a copper. You know, so, you know, all those sorts of things. And, and, and so for me, public service was just a natural thing. You know, I'm from Blackpool. Uh, the opportunities in Blackpool aren't massive, but there's a big sort of, you know, um, what was, you know, DSS sort of uh, estate. So I think everyone had pretty much had to do their time at, uh, at different parts of the pensions and all that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, moving down and I got this job in, in, uh, in business development. And like I said, I thought, you know, I thought I was doing well and I was getting bonuses and that was helping me as a young man sort of, you know, experience life and enjoy myself and all that sort of stuff. Um, but then sort of five years in, uh, everything switched. I got into a stable relationship uh, and, and all of a sudden sort of targets looming and, you know, sort of resetting the switch on sales uh, every month, you know, just used to just make, just fill me with A, with dread. And then I was like thinking, you know what? what am I doing this for? You know, like I was literally, you know, I had this massive sort of existential crisis. No surprise as my friends would know this of, of me, but you know, I hated going into work. I hated sort of being sort of dictated to by teams. I became very sullen. I became very sort of, um, uh, you know, not, well, I could say aggressive, but you know, became sort of very negative to, to oh, yeah. the people and the surroundings. And I think all the just all of that fuel and energy of, of being a young lad had, had, and you know sort of had been spent and and I was lost you know I was completely lost for about five years for the next five years so five years working doing all right the next five realizing that I was earning a shed load of money and and you know or whatever it might have been you know but I was getting nothing you know it was like a, as I call it you know it was like the Big Mac you know it was like a sort of a uh, you know, had no nutritional value to me, really. Hey, hey, and, uh, what what's wrong with the Big Mac? <laughs> oh, no, no, for me, for me, for me, sorry. <laughs> Come on what, now. Don't, another... don't, don't be hating on Mackies. <laughs> oh, all right, all right, fair play. Something that I'll have to think of another one then. But I don't know, yeah. I just mean that, you know, just yeah. like empty and, and, you know, just... I so I spent five years sort of, you know, trying to find my way around things. I was, I was desperate. I was panicked, thinking, you know... Oh, I'm, you know, I won't, will I have enough money to make my rent? Will I have enough money to, you know, to to, to look after my girlfriend or, you know, to, to to do stuff that I wanted to do and all this sort of thing? And, you know, looked around, I went to new companies, and, you know, dot, dotted around, you know, took on team management roles, promotions, you know, sort of like sideways moves, whatever it was. But every time I was like, this is getting me now, <laughs> you know. And, and, and I, I really enjoyed the people interaction of my job. But what I didn't enjoy, I think, was that sort of the, the sales sort of that, that sort of real battering sales thing, because money wasn't my driver. It was the relationship management. It was the sort of stakeholder side of things. Yeah. And 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 so for me, I sort of I knew I needed to get some different skills. Um, I wanted to get into project and program management. And then uh, as it was, we were thinking about starting a family and uh, I took a sort of uh, a, a pay cut made a decision, work, work more locally and work in the NHS. And a good opportunity arose and, and, and then that sort of started me off. So I've been 10, 11 years in the NHS now. Um, sort of done a number of things, more national roles more recently, including this one. Um, and then over the past sort of three years, really it's been mental health, which like I said, is, is really important to me. Um, not only from the sort of services perspective and trying to transform NHS services to make things yeah. a lot more sort of over not overarching so a wraparound service for people mm -hmm. rather than it just being go to the hospital or go into the secure unit or yeah. you know which is yeah that's horrible when you think about it and there's a lot to be said for what the NHS are trying to do but for me personally men's mental health is where it's at uh, because yeah. uh, you know we all have that yeah you know, we've got the lived experience and we've got the opportunities and we all should recognize that there are opportunities to make things better and that male suicide statistics sits with me all the time when I go into work that's exactly what drives me and motivates me so that's sort of how I got into it really but I think you know what was pressurizing was as a 20 year old or 20 something you know having to really make some uh, drastic decisions in my life about my career and stuff you yeah. know and, and and 
and I think what really stuck out for me was so like I say I'm 44 so my parents age there were guys I was at college with or at school with or whatever whose parents were getting laid off after they thought they were in a job for life you know the world of work was changing so much that yeah. we were seeing you know men get you know made redundant out of their work that they thought they had a safe job for life you think about yeah. the miners in the 80s you know like they all thought they had opportunities people in the sort of the northern working you know the northern mining towns they all thought they had jobs for life and that has been completely cut away and, and where does that leave you know your identity where does that leave you as, as that and so in my mind i was yeah. sort of balancing that between okay, I've got to make some changes. Otherwise I'm stuck in this job and I'm getting, you know, less and less and less and less and, you know, less motivated by it. But also I was thinking, what if I were to stay in a job like that? What if I were, you know, I'm completely at the whim of someone else. And, and so for me, you know, trying to find a new opportunity and build up my skills was something, one of the best decisions I've ever made. Although I had to make some big decisions for some short-term pain, I suppose, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that is a really interesting point you've made about, the transition of um, what you want to really do, like what gives you that energy, what gives you that zasp and source to wake up out of bed and go, yeah, this is what it's about. This, mm. is, this is my purpose. This is, why, this is where I find my identity. And I think, again, that's something that's highly um, misrepresented, isn't spoken of enough. It's like, oh, here's the trend. Go to school, go to college or sick form, get a degree. Yeah and try and do the job that is related to the degree, which most people don't. Then you're like in your twenties trying to work out your life and thrash out living hard and working out rents and bills and potential, yeah. maybe one day mortgages, once in the blue moon, pensions, Relationships. What, what is that? You know, and finding yeah. yourself, finding about yeah. you know, others. And then you get to like, this is not for everyone, but you get to like somewhere in your late twenties, mainly in your thirties and some in their forties. And as you say, the miners could have been older. And there's this position where you go, it's been took away from me. This is your, you know, your job. Or I don't like this. I, this is not what I see myself doing. I did this for the money. And then you've, yeah. got, then, got, then you've got the stresses in your mind of going, right, well, what next? Am I qualified? Oh, I've got to go to uni now. I've got to do a course. And there's all these millions of external factors that are you know, going on in your mind. And then you're thinking about your finances your bills still, and then you go, right, well, if I do that, it's a cut him. There's all yeah. these stresses. And again, it's like, who talks about this? You know, is this natural pub talk? Everyone in the pub talks about our oh, work today, but is it, you know, what about the, the places for people or um, the men and women of wisdom who, who've got, you know, enlightenment to share so that you don't panic and you, you can mm. literally, you stress yourself. It causes so much stress. And which can lead to ill mental health 100%. Yeah, so yeah you've made a great point. I think that's right. You know, you, you've nailed it. You've absolutely nailed it. You know, uh, stress left unchecked can completely, you know, take over your life, right? So, you know, you've nailed it there. You're thinking about rent. You're thinking about relationships. You're thinking about your place in the world. You're thinking about your family. You're thinking about your mum and dad. You know, you're thinking about all those different relationships that you have uh, and all those different um commitments you have you know yes. because let's be honest this is something else that get, gets on my nerves is that you know we are used in our in our modern day community uh, you know society sorry you know to we're all mortgaged up to the hilt in whatever way shape or form even if you've got a phone right you're mortgaged up to some company you know to pay that device back to pay their airtime plan you know there's there's something there you know you're talking oh gone off again but you know when we're talking about um uh you know there are there is enlightened uh sort of there are enlightened paths uh, and there are people or experiences that people can share um mm. you know i think about you know for me the one of the reasons i got out of my sort of um uh one of the reasons i got out of my uh a sort of um funk really which i'll, I'll sort of briefly touch on was um recognizing that there have been people that have experienced this in the past you know yes. we're not the first yes we're not the first and we're not going to be the last 
and then you know so for me you know like it's reading the philosophers or you know looking at how people created art you know looking at people for the you know, that make photography or that make films uh you know seeing how you know they all approach these sort of life's mysteries right yeah you know, they are uh you know it has been done before you know so things like you know uh, the Stoic school of philosophers from ancient Greece, or uh, I don't know, Henry David Thoreau that talked about, uh, you know, uh, decluttering your life and living simply, you know, that these are core skills and core expertise and core knowledge that we should all be investing in. Because if we don't, then we just become a pawn in a game and we have zero, you know, we have got zero autonomy or we become such a passive consumer that actually we've got no chance of addressing, you know, what we want to do and where we want to go as individuals. And for me, you know, we can help. And I think we should all be in a position where we could all learn from each other. And I think we can all learn from each other in one way or another, because everyone's experience is different. Oh, fire. Here we go. <laughs> People watching this right now. You get I hope some, so. Jesus, yeah. man. Sorry, pardon my, you know, but, you know, like, you know, that's for me, you know, it's so important. Yeah, I, I can't go into that. I, you, you sort of said, what's your biggest frustration nowadays? And that's definitely something to do with it, the internet. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, I actually, I came up with the name in Light in the Shadows. And, um, one, and you talked about philosophers. And I'm a bit... Um, inept or unaware with, 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 you know, the Greek philosophers and all that. I just never really got taught it and never went there. And this is not for the viewers to, to be lost and go, oh, they're going to go into some really boring subjects. No, yeah. it's not. <laughs> um, is it Plato or Plato? He, yeah, um, Plato. he did something that was completely linked with the reasoning <clears throat> behind the, the name in Light in the Shadows. In one of his books, I think it was in The Republic, he yeah. talked about the man in the cave. And I'm going to put it on the screen right now for the viewers. Check this picture out that's coming on your screen and have a look at this. Because this is exactly what I believe, not, a, not as a society necessarily in every single way, but I, I strongly believe that this is who we are as people, as pawns in society. And what James just said about your mortgage, your phones, we're not we're owned technically by these big giants and we're portrayed a certain way of life that yeah. enables us not to have full liberty or freedom and as you can see on this picture um people who are watching like they are given these little sticks um with shadows that they can't see that the sticks and shadows they're facing they have been um taught and ingrained to live a certain way and it's a lot like episode 12 with clear whitehead about deconditioned they were conditioned mm -hmm. to live this way to say this to think this to be like this and that's what the pitch is on the wall and that's the shadows that they see in the cave and it's the shadows that hold them there when the people the puppet you know masters, masters yeah that's yeah. it come on you know are there creating all this um and, and because of not, I don't want to criticize all of us, but because of our lack of understanding, uh, whether yeah. it's ignorance or apathy or whatever it is, we're well, not here to criticize, I, but we could be free if we're willing to look. I think, well, yeah, I think, I, reach you, out. if that makes sense. But yeah, that's where I got the name. I'm like, he said, how were they ever supposed to know or see when they were in the shadows or something? That was yeah, what he yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, bang, yeah. this is what, this is men. Absolutely, you know, and uh, I, I'm with you on that. I think that's very, very powerful. And I, I did, I did sort of think when, when you, you know, when you talk about that, it's, it's almost that sort of candle, isn't it, and the light bulb. I like your imagery; it's good because it's sort of, you know, it's sort, it's, it's, it's talking to enlightenment. It's talking to sort of, uh, you know, a light in a shadow, and it's talking to that sort of thing. And I think that's brilliant. I, I really like that. I think it, it's interesting you talked about. Um, sort of biggest frustrations uh, earlier and, and talking about the internet. I think, um, I think we have been hobbled by, uh, you know, over the past 20 years as a, as, as a, a society and as a, um, as, as mankind, really, humankind. Um, 
it, the internet really and the, our digital life as i see it is really turning us into passengers really of our own lives i don't think you know i think we passively consume we agree uh, to have our data farmed at any given opportunity you know when you press accept everything or whatever you know you're allowing other people to profit off you you're allowing people to take your intellectual property or your intellectual thought and and you're just allowing you know rich people uh, to make to, to make themselves even richer you know uh, by just by using us you know we're being farmed that's how okay. I see it. You know, we're literally being farmed and we've got no chance. You know, you mentioned, oh, perhaps we need to, we, perhaps we do have the chance and perhaps we can be more active. Um, and I think we can, but I think we've got to know the rules of the game. If we don't know the rules of the game, you know, then we have no chance. So that means that choice at the moment, choice in our digital lives is virtually zero, right? Got you. Google, Amazon, uh, you know, all the other things, I don't know, can't even think, but you know, you the think giants. about every single, yeah, all the, yeah, the giants, you know, uh, the engineer apps, you know, people in Silicon Valley and in India or wherever, you know, that, uh, you know Hong Kong and places like that, Europe, you know, everywhere, you know, they engineer apps to behaviorally addict us, uh, you know, and more importantly for this discussion, expose you know, our social and personal vulnerabilities. Now you think about, you know, social comparison, you know, social comparison, when you look at it, is 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 one of the biggest engines of us as human beings. That's how we cope, that's how we manage, that's how we connect, that's how we yeah. love. Yeah. Uh, social comparison, we do that. We we move to groups, we move away from groups, we, you know, all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And these apps, all they're doing is they're just preying on your vulnerabilities. And that is an absolute disgrace in my mind because I cannot see how we are not on a level, play, level playing field, right? You know, when you see um, gambling ads, okay? Gambling ads say, oh, you know, they've got the big banner at the bottom saying, when the fun stops, stop, right? Um, and I'm sure that is a, a, a it's a well-meaning piece of sort of behavioral change sort of theory in action, right? Of course. And we need to make sure that there is some form of safety net there for individuals. Um, but when, you know, the cards are as loaded as they are into, you know, the bet, you know, how bets are set up. I'm not an expert in this space, but, you know, there are people out there that are ex experts in how the how the system sort of works. Um, you know, hacks and tips and, you know, sort of offers of support from the industry are not, you know, and offering it as a solution. You no. know, it's not it. You know, we need to reframe our digital lives. I think that's what it is. And I think we've got to understand the rules of the game. This is sorry. Sermon, is, sermon over. Mate, <laughs> this is brilliant. This is just fire. Um, oh, man, I really hope that so many can really lean into this and go into the episode this far. and and extract this information because this is completely linked to men mental health. If you guys or girls, if you're tuning in, cause we're, you know, it's niche for men, but I know it's reaching some women too. If you are listening to this and go, what on earth are they talking about? What's that got to do with mental health? It's got everything to do with it because the information, any sen sensory input that our ears or eyes which this digitalized stuff which james is saying comes our way and we interpret it where it's in our brain which creates what behaviors which creates the our thought processes and what we do and why we do it so what we're trying to say is this <laughs> try your best to be self-aware about what you do with your time what are your patterns on social media and on your phone because uh, hey, look i'll put my hands up I can be the exact candidate that we're talking about tonight. Yeah, same. I to check same. myself because it's so easy to do it. And that's the point. And we're just challenging. I think James and I are challenging each other's thinking. And you're thinking about being more self-aware so that will it have an ill effect on your mental health? Or is this actually positively improving you? And I think mm. deep down, every person watching this will know in the depths of their heart what is and what isn't and they'll know they'll know so yeah oh my gosh this was well that's this that's good man great <laughs>
<laughs> oh, bless you. Well, look, you know, I mean, they're, they're the things that sort of, you know, you, you, you sort of said, you said, let's sort of think about any sort of frustrations. And, and, and you're right, you know, the, the more that we allow ourselves to almost sort of be swayed by the, uh, you know, buffeted by the winds of and, and the whims of other people, either digitally or socially or whatever, the less we're in charge of our own boat, right? You know, the, the you know, the, the the more frustrated we'll become, I guess. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, for me, that's just uh, I don't know. It just jumps out at me as being something that I think we can potentially control. You know, I think it's something that we can um, almost put a check you know, to say, is this right? Are we feeling that right? Is that, is that good? And like you said, you know, is it good? Is it negative? Yeah, How can we do it? Yeah, exactly. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, it's good, man. Yeah. I, I, I was going to talk to you about like your, your mental health journey and how to equip people with resilience, but I just believe it in the meat of what we just spoke about the last, I don't know what it's been, 10, 15 minutes it has been absolutely yeah. brilliant. I, I think there's a lot there for our viewers to get out, but, what I would love um, to ask you before we close, James, is um, our Enlighten the Shadows question, um, which I, I normally ask a lot of people. And um, I, I specifically ask this because of what we've spoken about, that suicide in males is over 75% male to female and over 4,128 in recorded. And until that's zero, I won't stop asking um, people like yourself and all my other amazing guests this question. And I won't shut up in like in the shadows until we stop. And we're, we're creating, as we said on episode 12 with Cleo Whitehead, um, hybrids. We're making new new males, new men in, into stronger, better, more so. All right, okay. Emotionally aware. So, yeah. But, yeah, what I want to ask you is what is your best piece of advice, James, um, to a bloke who just feels utterly hopeless and they just want to end it all, like, mm. today, even as they're watching? Yeah. So I just want, I, I have thought about it and I, and, and I think the, there's, there's sort of different areas. Sorry, the reason I'm sort of hesitating is because I want to try and say a, a, a couple of things. But I mean, the first is, you know, however low you've fallen or however shamed or guilt, guilted you feel, uh, however much sort of hurt you you have and you're holding on to, uh, you know, you are worthwhile. I guess that's sort of what I would suggest. Um, you know, loss happens, loss hurts. Um, we do recover. Uh, you know, I think, you know, you aren't alone, you know, use that enlighten the shadows sort of type uh, type message, you know, you're not alone, however dark it is, you know, however dark it might seem. And, and know that, you know, none of us have got this worked out, man, you know, none of us have, you know, we're all feeling our way, we're all going to, excuse my language, fuck up, you know, tomorrow, you know, we're all going to make a mess of something, we're all going to be at a low ebb. Um, and, and I guess, you know, the more forgiveness you can offer yourself um reach out to people and talk obviously but you know you are worthwhile and uh, you know that that you know something like you know sort of ending it um just just take a few moments things always look better in the morning you know uh i know sleep can be very difficult for people especially if they've got mental illness so you know they are very challenging times and I'm not sort of one to, to say it will, all, it will get better, but you can just sort of try to acknowledge it and, um, I don't know, just try and be, just reach out and, 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 you know, try to sort of go easy on yourself because we're all, we're all weak and we're all, we are, we are weak. You know, that's us, you know, we're, yeah. we're broken. We break, we break, you know, we, 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 we hurt people. We hurt ourselves. And, um, you know, don't take it too hard. And, you know, I'm sure there are solutions and friends and contacts and people that would be there to support you any step of the way. That's it. Smashed it, bro. And you know what? You're absolutely right. We are weak. But there's a, uh, a Japanese type of artistry in pottery, and it's called Kunsagi, I believe. And I'll put it on the screen, a picture of it. Ooh, yes. And you... Uh, 
you smash a um, bit of pottery, a bit of mug. And the art of this Japanese thing is to know that despite this thing looks utterly shattered, it, it, it can't stand, it's in pieces. And that's how yeah. we feel. And that's the question I asked James. And if you're watching this right now, that's how you feel. We don't feel what you feel, but we have felt those thoughts too. And we get that it feels like that bit of pottery. You are absolutely in pieces. You are shattered. But in this art form, slowly, as James said, as thoughts come together, knowing that we are weak, but also with a little bit of a helping hand, they get this golden type adhesive glaze and get, they get every piece and put it back together. And actually, the bit of pottery that was before looked plain, looks average. Mm. And the new looks stunning and intricate and interesting and look like it's in places and has got something about it and it's got these gold cracks you can see the scars still but the scars don't define you as a weak person they're a sign of your strength that when you were weak and you can feel weak that you overcame so yeah massive james love it cheers mate oh that's brilliant look i've i, I, I mean there's loads more I could talk about. <laughs> I, I, there? We'll, have to, we'll have to get you back on. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I just, I was just thinking, you know, there, there's loads of stuff, and you know, like, I, yeah. I just thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. And, and if there's any, you know, any other opportunities that anyone wants to get in contact with, uh, you know, you and I are hopefully going to be doing a bit more together over the coming weeks and months. Um, and you know, if there's anything that I can help with anyone, or if anyone wants to have a chat, give us a shout or connect me up on Twitter or whatever, you know, and, you know, if we can help in any way, I'm sure we're both up for lending a hand where we come can, on. yeah? 100%, this is how we work, brother. So, nice guys, one, mate. coming up on uh, the screen right now, before we say bye, is James's Twitter handle. Check him out, follow him, like <laughs> his tweets, big him up. And then for us as well, get on YouTube, click that red button right now, it's just below, subscribe it. Join us on this journey and also on our socials as we're giving James's on Instagram and Twitter. Coming up is at Enlighten the SH1. And just before we do say bye, get in touch with us. If you're one of those people that say we're struggling, we, you know, we've got a disclaimer that's on our email, which we'll talk to you about if you get in touch. But we will listen and we won't judge you. And we can also signpost you to the correct professionals to get that help. And we all work together on this because the, the biggest judgment that's clear white has said on episode 12 is with ourselves and we feel that others will feel the same way and judge us it's not going to happen here in like the shadows the email address is exactly the same in like the sh1 at gmail.com so guys thank you so much this has been episode 13 have an amazing week and tune in next week at half seven for our next episode thank you guys thanks james cheers mate cheers guys <laughs>